Hello everyone, welcome to Glitch Hikers, a game that seemingly tries to capture the strange otherworldliness of driving at night. There's apparently hitchhikers you can also pick up and converse with. It's a very meditative experience, I would say. I've played it for a couple minutes and it just seems really cool. I like it. So I'm in this car here. can switch lanes. can speed up and down. A little bit. I think I can go up to about 120. Yeah, go up to 120 or go down to 90. Kilometers per hour. And let's see what we can find on this stretch of road. It's definitely a game to sit back and relax and just absorb and listen to the radio. And that was Pinky's Dream by David Lynch. This is Radio 90, and you're listening to Night Drive. Thanks for joining us tonight. Almost a hundred years before Columbus ever sailed to the Americas, a Chinese explorer named Shang He made seven naval expeditions, traveling thousands of miles with over 300 ships. When the next emperor came to power, all the ships were destroyed, and the Ming Dynasty entered a period of isolationism that lasted hundreds of years. With that one decision, the fate of the world changed. Let's go on a journey together, with our next song, Find Me on a Whim. There's a hitchhiker. Think I'll pick them up in just a second. Uh, there we go. Hello there. Thanks for the pickup. I was beginning to think it would be hours before I got a lift from something worthy. Bad experience. It's nothing a little drive can't fix. Just to the next rest stop would be great. A good drive can fix a lot. Mind if I smoke? Apparently I don't mind, because you're doing it anyway. Driving is a metaphor. It's all just a metaphor. Is, is that a joint? Good old BC, bud. And that was a little on the nose, don't you think? Yeah, okay, maybe. They say the journey is more important than, you know, the other thing. Why are you driving? I'm driving to find something. We're all looking for something, right? Answers. Meaning, perhaps. Ourselves. When I was a kid, we had a cabin out on one of the islands. At night. You could see thousands of stars. It was so bright, you didn't need a flashlight. I gave them all names. Atticus and Caesar, Garuda and Saul. They fought each other in wars of my making. Alliances formed and were broken. Explosions burst across the sky. I was a god to them. Stars are a light in the darkness. Maybe the darkness is an illusion. My parents pretty much ignored me. Father was too drunk, mother too busy. Yet I still remember those days fondly. Think that says something about me? 
No. It doesn't. One day, a man came to the grassy spot where I played. He said he was from the stars, and he pleaded for my mercy. I told him it was all make-believe. He just shook his head. So, did you stop doing it? You know, I don't remember. I guess I must have. I never saw him again. Too bad I was never really a kid. Thanks for the lift. Goodbye. Well, that was a little different. Ever wonder why the night sky is black, even though there is nowhere you could look that doesn't eventually have a star? Shouldn't it be white? And scientists say the average color of the universe is beige. There are stars above you even in the day. And they are watching. Gravity will, up next. Keep your eye on the road and have a lovely drive. A cool little detail I've noticed is that the cars that you see in front of you think you can just speed up to catch them, right? But no. You can never catch them. They always stay ahead of you. You get a little bit closer, and then they take off. Always in the distance. Always out of reach. Oh! Uh... Hello? When, when did I pick you up? I found a beached whale the other day. Up north. Just lying there. It was still alive. It looked up at me as I approached. You know why whales breach them beach themselves? I actually don't. I have no idea. No one knows for sure. Well, no, not really. Only 50% of beachings have discernible explanations. Anyway, I wasn't asking you. That's what I asked the whale. Why do humans jump off bridges? It responded. All sorts of reasons, I said. But it looked at me like it knew. Knew I didn't really know. Or didn't I? <laughs> the whale could talk. <laughs> it's a natural question, but seems beside the point, right? Most suicides are the result of mental illness. I mean, yeah, often, I guess. But is there more to it? What's at the end of the jump? You ever think about just driving off the road? Careening through the barrier? Down a cliff? Into the forest or water? We all have those fantasies. We never do it. Somehow this world won't let us.
I've thought about doing it myself. People don't often think it'll hurt anyone but themselves, but it does. A lot of people around you get hurt. Besides, a lifetime is a long time to find happiness. Even a few months can bring big changes. You ever lost someone close to you? No, I haven't. You're lucky. But it happens to everyone, eventually. Death and taxes. It's hard at first. So hard. They're gone forever. I lost a brother, a little while ago. He was always there for me. Now he's just... not. That hurts. Thinking about it is like dressing a throbbing wound that you know will never fully heal. No matter what, it will always be there. Only 10% of people who survive suicide attempts go on to die by suicide. Many have transformative experiences and would never consider it again. Some even realize they want to live, right when it's too late to stop. But you push a whale back into the water, and it swims itself right back onto the beach. Maybe they know something we don't. Does death ever make sense? And the circle of life continues. We don't always have control over our lives, over what happens to us. But we do control how we react. Accept, grow, live, love, hide, fade, wither, wizen, embrace, fight. You are all alone out there, but you know, you're never alone. Millions of distinct bacteria share your body. You're never alone. Keep driving, driver. Turtles All the Way Down is up next. universe is expanding, and yet the universe has no edge. What is it expanding into? I'm in my fourth year of physics, and even I don't really get it. I don't know. It's still such a mystery. There are many ways science can explain it. But we still don't really know, do we? There's still so much we don't understand, and that's kind of beautiful. See, the thing is, I don't really need to get it. There's like 300 billion stars in our galaxy alone, and billions more galaxies out there. Our little single planet doesn't matter a bit in it all, and yet, it's still wonderful, don't you think? I agree. The universe is wonderful. Even within an infinity of the unknown, we still have love and happiness and life. In all the crazy infinity that is our existence, in all the vastness of understanding we still lack, there's this amazing thing that is consciousness. Carl Sagan once said that since we are part of the universe, consciousness allows the universe to know itself. That's... beautiful. One day in the lab, we were doing chemistry experiments, right? Just a simple grade school exercise of burning different substances to see the colors they produce, like fireworks. Magnesium, copper, 
strontium, lithium, science and art come together. My lab partner was this girl I didn't know, but god she was pretty, in sort of a spunky way. We talked about different kinds of stars, and the heat death of the universe, and entropy. It was the start of something beautiful. What was her name? We went away the next day, far away, to a little world of our own, floating amongst nebulae and white dwarfs and undiscovered planets. Her sense of humor was dry. Sometimes I didn't even know she was joking. She said the most absurd things, how she wanted to die in the heart of a star. I said she'd burn up long before she got close, and she looked at me like it was a challenge. We laughed and cried together, helped each other through tough times, family and friends, and our own minds. The way she looked at me, a little smile in her eyes. The way she could rattle off chemical equations and the constructions of molecules. She drew them in her sleep, and I'd watch her eyelids flutter gently, the rise and fall of her chest, the tendons in her arms. We watched the fireworks together on New Year's rattling off the compounds used, the balance of heat and luminosity, then flew off into the sky through the lingering smoke. We were together six months before it flamed out, too intense for us to keep it up, but it was beautiful while it lasted. I will always love those days. Love is an amazing thing. It's what it's all about. Connecting with other people like that the universe knowing itself. I'm going to see my new girlfriend now, just outside the city. We are, all, we are all going to die in a fiery explosion one day. We are. It's just going to happen. But what a wonderful thing to be a part of it in the meantime. God, I love driving. Don't you love driving? Why do you drive? I'm looking for something. Understanding, maybe. Driving helps me find it. Right? There are answers out there. And the beauty is in the search. Drive on. Look at the night sky. What do you see out there? Emptiness? Chaos? An uncaring void? Or do you see the stars? The art of the nebulae, the romance of distant galaxies? Is God watching you? Is she watching any of us? Seven billion people on this world, and all we have is each other. Our own little infinity. Now count back with me, driver. Five, four, three, three two, two, one. Welcome back. This has been Radio 90 Night Drive. Travel safely. Good night.
The universe, the universe and all